Thanks for watching Lessons in Minutes with J. Lee. Like, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Today, we're going to look at another aspect of the double entry system for assets, capital, and liabilities, and that is preparing T accounts. In our previous lesson, we have looked at an introduction to the double entry system where our focus was on the double entry rules. If you have missed that lesson, the link is in the description below. And guess what? That lesson is important for you to understand this one where we'll be preparing T accounts for assets, capital, and liabilities from a list of transactions. We're going to look at an example in preparing ledger accounts, T accounts. For this question, you're required to record the following transactions in the books of J. Brown for the month of November 2022. So you're provided with the owner's name. You could have been given the name of the business. All right. Now the first transaction, November 1st, started business with $10,000 cash. And based on your previous knowledge, you would have realized that the two items affected are cash and capital. And the account to be debited is cash. The account to be credited is capital based on the double entry rules. Now, for each item that is affected, we're going to need an account for that in order to carry out the principle in preparing the ledger accounts. So we're going over to our working sheet. And if you notice at the top of your page, you're seeing J. Brown ledger. And that is simply indicating that you're preparing the records for J. Brown. The first form that you're looking at, you're able to detect the letter T. If you look, that is in red. On your left-hand side, remember that's your debit. On your right-hand side, remember that is your credit. So I'm gonna put DR there to remind you that that is your debit side and CR to remind you that that is your credit side. Now each item affected carries its own ledger account. So earlier, we recognize that based on that transaction, the two items affected are cash and capital. So we need an account for each. So I'm going to label this one capital. You could have started with cash, just the same. And it is capital AC. And AC is the abbreviation for account. Based on the transaction, your capital account should be credited. So on the right-hand side, which is your credit side, you're going to enter the entry. So you're gonna make a record of the entry. The entry consists of the date, the details and the amount for your level, okay? The entry at a higher level will consist of the date, the details, the folio and the amount. But in this, this case, we're looking at simple ledger accounts. So that is the date, details and the amount for your entry. Now, the date is 2022, that's 2022, and that is November 1st, that is when the transaction took place, and don't forget people to ensure that you write your date, you have to record your date. Now, we're in the details column, and it's like completing a form, we're in the details column, the ruling entering up the details is that you would record the other item that is affected. We are within the capital account. And remember the, top, the title is at the top of the T. So capital is at the top of the T, indicating that we are in the capital account. We're making our credit entry. So if we are in the capital account and your details is the other item affected, which is basically a cross-referencing, it means that we are going to record cash as our details. And the amount for that transaction is $10,000, all right? So we have the credit entry and that is in our capital account based on the transaction we are to credit capital. So it means that we need to now open up the account for the other item that is affected. So we need to get a separate ledger account, a separate T account for cash. 
So the title for this one is cash account. And don't forget that we are entering this as an abbreviation for account. Based on the transaction, the cash account should be debited. So on the left-hand side, which is the debit side, we are to make that entry. And don't forget that the entry consists of the date, the details, and the amount. The date is the year 2022, and that is November 1st. Our details, remember, that is the other item affected. We are within the cash account. Cash is at the top of the T, indicating that we are within the cash account. And our details is the other item affected. And in this case, that is capital. Now, the amount is $10,000. Okay? Now, let us pause a little to examine the entries that were made in the account. All right? So, based on the transaction, the two items affected are capital and cash. If you look, you're seeing one of the T labeled capital account. Remember the title is at the top of the T and the other is labeled cash account, okay? Now within the capital account, so we are in the capital account and the entry for the transaction is placed on the credit side of the capital account because based on the transaction, your capital account is to be credited. Now, the other item that is affected, which is our cash account, cash is at the top of the T, and based on that transaction, the cash account is to be credited. So the entry, which consists of the date, the details, and the amount is on the debit side. Now, what is this basically saying? When you look at the details in the capital account, the details is cash. This entry in the capital account is on the credit side. Your details is cash. It is basically saying to us that if we go to the cash account, we'll find the entry on the debit side, the corresponding entry on the debit side. Okay, now that we have all of that, let us now move into the other transaction. And that transaction reads November 3rd, date is very important, bought equipment on credit from J Forbes $200. The items affected are J Forbes and equipment. Based on a double entry rule and the effect, based on a transaction, Equipment is to be debited, while J Forbes is to be credited, okay? Now, we need to make the entry into the accounts. So we need an account for equipment and one for J Forbes. So let's go to our ledger and we need to open an account for J Forbes, because we didn't have any account for J Forbes. So this is J Forbes. And remember, we need the abbreviation for account to indicate that that is J Forbes account. And based on the transaction, J Forbes account is to be credited, meaning you're putting the entry on the credit side. So the date is 2022. And that is November 3rd. Our details, again, the rule is to write the name of the other item that is affected. And in this case, it is equipment. The amount coming from that transaction is $200. So we have the credit entry. We need to meet the debit entry. Based on the transaction, the other item affected is equipment. So the debit entry is to be made in the equipment account. But guess what? When we check our ledger, we don't have any equipment account as yet. So it means that we need to open an account for equipment. Opening an account for equipment is basically telling you that 
at the top of the T, you are to write the title, equipment. And then abbreviation for account. Basically, we have now opened an account for equipment. Based on the transaction, the equipment account is to be debited. So therefore, we're putting the entry on the left-hand side. So the year is 2022. Again, it is November 3rd that the transaction took place. Our details is the other item affected, and that is J Forbes. And the amount is $200. Okay, we're now going to look at another transaction. And that is November 4th, the owner took $2,000 for own use. The items affected are cash and capital. Based on the effect and the double entry rule, the capital account is to be debited and the cash account is to be credited. So we're going to go over to our working sheet or ledger sheet to make the entries in the accounts. So let us move over and guess what? We have an account for capital already. So because we have an account for capital, we're simply going to place that entry in the account. There's no need for us to open a new ledger account for capital, a new T account for capital, because we have an account for capital already. All we need to do is to place the entry in the capital account. And to do that, based on the double entry rule and based on the transaction, the capital account is to be debited. Debiting the account people is to place the entry on the left-hand side of the account. So here we have the capital account. We need to debit the account. Putting the entry on that left-hand side. Our date is 2022, and that is November 4th. Our details, again, the other item affected, and that is cash. And the amount is $2,000. All right. So now that we have our debit entry, we need the corresponding credit entry. And that entry should be made in the cash account. So again, cash is at the top of the T, indicating the title of the account. We need to go within the cash account. But guess what? This time, the entry should be on the credit side. The entry includes the date, the details, and the amount. The date is 2022, November 4th. But because we have 2022 at the top of this page already, there is no need for us to write the year again. So we're going to proceed to enter November 4th or details, other item affected. In this case, that is capital. And the amount is $2,000. So for November 4th, we have both entries. We have one on the debit side and that is on the debit of capital and the other entry is on the credit side and that's on the credit of our cash account so for that transaction double entry is completed once you have a debit entry and a credit entry double entry is completed okay we're now going to look at another transaction and that transaction reads november 6th borrowed $400 cash from NCB. The two items affected are cash and NCB. Based on the effect and the double entry rule, cash should be debited and NCB credited. Okay, so we're going to make the entry in the accounts. Let's move over to our working sheet. Now, we have a cash account already. So we're simply going to place the entry in the cash account. So guess what? The cash account should be debited. All we're simply entering for the entry is a date, which is, is November 6th. 
And because November is already listed, there, there's no need for us to write November again. All we do is to put the day. Our details is the other item affected. And that is NCB. And in bracket, you can put loan to indicate loan account. And the amount is 400. So don't forget that you need your date, the details, which is the other item affected, and the amount. Okay? Now, based on the transactions that we had before, NCB account wasn't affected, so it wasn't open. So for this one, we need to open a new account for NCB. So we're going to call this NCB in bracket loan account. Don't forget the abbreviation for account. And we are going to credit the account based on the transaction. Now, our date is November 6th. The details of other item affected, and that item affected is cash. So our details is cash, and the amount is $400. Okay, so for this transaction, we have both entries. The cash account is debited, and the NCB loan account is credited. So we're going to move into the other transaction. And that reads, it's November 7, paid J Forbes the amount owing by cash. We're not seeing any amount. So how do we know how much we're owing to J Forbes? How much is it that we are to pay J Forbes? You can just backtrack to November 3rd, where the previous transaction took place, where we had purchased the equipment, we didn't pay for it. So we were owing $200 to J Forbes. So we know that we need to pay J Forbes $200. Another way in which you can determine the amount that you're owing to the person is to go to the account. So if you go to J Forbes account, look on the credit side, you're seeing $200. So once it's a liability and your credit is more than your debit, the difference between both sides will tell you how much you're owing to the individual. So if you look on the debit, nothing is on the debit. On the credit, we have $200. So this simply indicates that the difference between the debit and the credit is $200. This is telling us that we are owing to J Forbes $200. Let's go back and look at what we need to do in terms of the transaction. The two items affected are cash and J Forbes. J Forbes is to be debited based on the effect and the double entry rule, while cash account is to be credited. So let's go to our ledger sheet and make the entry in our different account. We have J Forbes account already. There's no need for us to open up a new account for J Forbes. We're just going to simply enter our date, which is 2022. It is November 7. Our details is other item affected, which is cash. And the amount is $200. So we have just completed the debit entry. We need to complete the credit entry to ensure that double entry is completed. Remember the general principle, once there's a debit, there should be a corresponding credit. So J Forbes account is debited. It means that we need to credit the cash account. So it is November 7. Our D is other item affected, which is J Forbes. And the amount is $200. And that basically completes the double entry for that final transaction. Remember that for every transaction, one item must be debited, one item credited. All right? For that last one, let's focus on that a little. Based on the transaction, J Forbes account is to be debited, meaning you're writing the entry on the debit side. So you're actually completing that form, that ledger account, that T account. And in doing that, we enter the date, the details, which is the other item affected by the transaction, and the amount. And that is placed on the debit side. It means that we have made a debit entry in J Forbes account. In terms of the cash account, which is the other item affected, 
we made a credit entry. So we're in the cash account. So that's the title, the cash account, and we're to make a credit entry. We record a date. We recorded the details, which is the other item affected, and the amount. Once you have all of that, you have made the entry. So notice, one entry is on the left, one entry is on the right for the other account. In that case, you have completed double entry. And that takes us to the end of our lesson where we looked at preparing ledger accounts, basically T accounts. Like, share, and don't forget to subscribe.